So is there a magic formula that you can use to be able to set your prices? Do you multiply your costs by two? Do you multiply them by three? Do you add this and do you play with this? Listen, everybody, there's a lot of different ways that you can set your pricing. You can do markups, you can do margin, you can do whatever it is that seems right for you. But at the end of the day, there's a way that you can check to make sure you are being profitable. And that's what we want to talk about today. Hey, Badass Business Owners, my name is Tammy, and I'm here to help you grow your business, but more importantly, grow those profits. And what I want to do is I want to talk about pricing, and I want to show you uh, some examples that we're going to go through that's going to tell you if the way you're setting your pricing is working for you today or if it's not, and how you can easily check it to make sure that you're setting yourself up to make profit. Because at the end of the day, it is a profit game, not just a sales game. And by using the example that we're going to do, it's going to be able to show you how you can use your own numbers and see if it's going to work for you. Because uh, like I said, there's a lot of different ways out there that you can price things. I mean, sometimes a, a certain industry will tell you, hey, you take your costs and then you just double it. And some will tell you to do this, do that, whatever the case may be. You're, you, you know, you, you probably will get, and you probably have noticed this, that if you ask 10 people what's the right way for you to price your stuff, you're going to get 10 different answers. And some of them work, some of them will make somebody a healthy profit, and other people it doesn't work for them at all. And the reason is because sometimes it's just blind luck. I mean, it, if you think about it, if, if I took my cost, let's just say this pen here, right? Let's just say this pen cost me a dollar. And I can randomly just say I'm going to charge somebody $10 for it. And I can pretty much guarantee that I'm probably going to be profitable with that, right? I mean, it's I pay a dollar and sell it for 10, I'm probably going to make some money. But if I sit there and I say, I want to be the best price person on this pin, I might say, well, if I double it, and I sell it for $2, I can sell a lot more of these pins than somebody charging $10. And is that true? You're probably going to have more sales but are you going to necessarily make more profit? Because if you think about it, the person who who sold it for the $10 and only paid one, they've got $9 of potential profit before their expenses, where the other person's only got a dollar, and they have to sell that nine times to make the same kind of money and then decide, you know, at the end of the day after their expenses, if it's going to be profitable. Both ways can be profitable. One has to sell more than the other one. And I'm not saying one's better than the other one, because at the end of the day, it's about can it off offset the other operational costs that you have in your business. Now, I know this is a little bit confusing. And what I want to do is I want to use a dog groomer as an example. And in this dog groomer example, I'm going to show you how if let's just say that people tell them that, hey, 60 bucks, the standard is you got to charge $60 for this, and it's going to make you profitable. So all these different dog groomers are out there charging 60 bucks. Now, if you're a dog groomer and you charge something different, calm down. It's all okay. I'm just using an example. In my area, I can get my dogs groomed for 60 bucks. So we're going to use $60. But let's take a dog groomer, for example. There's three different ways that you can be a dog groomer, right? You can run the business out of your home. You can have a van or a mobile type of dog grooming business where you take your dog grooming business to them. And you can have a brick and mortar business as well. So three different ways that you can be a dog groomer, right? Now let's assume that all three of these dog groomers charge $60. Let's find out if that price is the right price for them and what kind of profit they can expect by charging that $60. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to remember our number one calculation, right? Sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. Um, I've told you guys memorize. This is the only thing I ask you to memorize. Sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits. So we're going to use that with our three different dog groomers and we're going to find out what that looks like. Let's just say they all have the same cost of goods. So we're going to look at cost of goods, right? And they're going to have a fair wage for doing it because we want to include our cost of goods includes a fair labor for that service because you cannot groom a dog without a person. So whether it's an employee we've hired or it's ourself, we want to first set aside money for ourselves for dog grooming. And if you want to learn more about why I'm telling you to do this, make sure you watch these other videos that I have where I talk about you get paid two ways in your business, right? Now you're probably wondering why I'm asking you to make sure that you're using a fair wage when you work for yourself. The reason is because you as a business owner are getting paid two different ways in your business. One is as an employee and one is the business is profitable as a business owner. And we want to set you up for the best success. So we want to make sure that we're separating out those two. Now it doesn't mean you're having a regular payroll. It doesn't mean that you're going to go set that up. It just, I mean, it's all going to be owner's draw at the end of the day. We're just making sure that the first money 
money you take out of the business is for the employee you, so you can make sure that you're priced correctly, right? So if we're setting a fair minimum wage or fair wage at $25, then we know that a dog takes about an hour to do, so we're going to have a, a wage of $25. Now, when we add up the shampoo and maybe we're putting a bow in the dog's hair or a little collar, whatever, let's just say those are $3 um, when you put it all together, right? So our cost of goods for this dog grooming is going to be about $28, right? $25 for the uh, hourly wait for the employee wage, right? And then $3 for the uh, other costs associated with it. So our cost of goods is going to be $28 and it's going to be the same for all three people because they're all three going to do something similar. So it's going to be $28. So the next thing, sales minus cost of goods. Now we move on to expenses. Well, expenses are going to be different for all three of these people. My expenses, if I'm working out of my home, are going to be very different than if I have a mobile business or if I have a brick and mortar business, because they're going to be much lower working out of my home and they're going to be at the highest when I'm working for a brick and mortar and I'm having mortgage or rent payments and the electricity and the utilities and all those other things to run this bigger business, right? Uh, different types of insurances, everything else. And I probably have other employees that work for me as well. So my expenses are going to be much higher. So for our example, what we're going to do is we're going to assume that the, uh, the worker for home, it, their expenses tend to run them when they're looking at their P&L, their expenses tend to run about 15% of their sales, where a mobile groomer, we're going to say that their expenses tend to run them 25%. And for the person who's working at a brick and mortar, who owns a brick and mortar, theirs are running 50%. Now you're probably going, Tammy, how did you even get this number? It's simple. You just grab your profit and loss statement, and then you're going to take your total expenses for the year and divide it by your total sales. And that's going to give you a percentage. Now you can take any per period of time if you want. If you find that yours fluctuates by quarter, then do it by those quarters. But at the end of the day, the way you get your percentage is your expenses divided by your sales. I do recommend more than just one month because every month has different types of costs associated with it. Um, and you know your insurance might drop in once a year, it might drop in once a quarter, uh, stuff like that. So you want a longer period of time so you can kind of get an average for this. Uh, so in our case, once again, it's 15% for the one at home, 25% for our mobile groomer, and it's gonna be 50% for our brick and mortar. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna figure out what dollar they need to set aside for each of these uh, sales that they can put aside for their expenses. So for our stay at home person, we're going to take the $60 times the 15%, because remember, everything's a percentage of sales. So when we take our uh, $60 times the 15%, it tells us that we need to set aside $9 for our expenses. Then if we go to the mobile groomer, we have to set aside 25% of that $60, which is gonna come out to $15. And then for our uh, brick and mortar person, 50% has to be set aside. So $30 has to be set aside in order for them to be able to um, pay their expenses. Now with that, what we do is we move on and we say, okay, I've got all my numbers. I know what my cost of goods are and I know what my individual expenses are. So all three of these dog groomers are going to go in and they're going to plug in their number. And then what we're going to come up with is this. Once again, our main calculation, sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profit. So we're going to use that. So for our work from home person, it's our home-based individual. It's going to be $60 minus the $28 minus the $9 of expenses comes out to $23 profit that they're probably going to have. Now, what does it look like for our mobile groomer? Our mobile groomer is $60 minus the same $28 in cost of goods, but their expenses were $15, which means that their profit is $17. And then for our brick and mortar person, it's $60 minus the $28, minus $15 that they have to set aside for their expenses. And that means their profit is $2. Do you see a big difference here? The brick and mortar person, because their expenses are so high, are only going to make $2, where the person working from home makes $23. And our mobile groomers in the middle at that 17 That's why when people are so antsy to get a brick and mortar location, I just like, ah, you don't understand. Your profit's going to tank the minute you do that. It's not always as rosy as you think it is, but that's a different video or a different podcast episode for a different day. Uh, matter of fact, I have one out there on this. But 
the main thing you want to look at is the fact that they all took the same standard that somebody told them to price, which was that $60. But at the end of the day, their profits are so different based off of the type of business that they have. So the reason that I go over this is because I want you to be extremely cautious when you hear about this standard way or looking for some magic way for you to be able to price your your products or services. I want you to do the math. I want you to start off with whatever you think is the right way, but I want you to go plug in the numbers so you can see is that still going to help you become profitable? Because what probably needs to happen is that brick and mortar person probably needs to raise their prices. Are they going to be able to make up $21 and charge 80 something? Maybe. But maybe even if it was more than 60, maybe it was $70 for the brick and mortar, at least they can get back closer to being a mobile person. Uh, Or the mobile person might want to be $65 and maybe it's $75 for the brick and mortar. Everybody's got, you know, you kind of have to play with it with the type of margin, the type of profit that you want to get out of it. But if you don't plug the numbers in, you're never going to know. And this works for all types of businesses. This business just happened to have three very different types of Uh, way that people do the business. So it's really easy to show you the difference all in one. But when it comes to pricing, I really want you to understand what goes in it. So some of the key things that we talked about is not only to plug in the numbers into our sales minus cost of goods minus expenses equals profits, but if you've missed it and you're not doing it, the other important thing we did is we accounted for a fair wage for the owner. Okay, who's doing the work? Because in the brick and mortar, the owner may not be doing the work. So in which case they're paying that $25 to an employee. But if I'm a mobile groomer or I'm working from home, I am paying that. So the person working from home might falsely think they're making like 60 bucks, you know, after their cost going, oh, I only got $3 in this. I'm making 50 some odd dollars every single time. No, you need to plan on the fact that it's still costing you that same hour. So when you're doing your pricing, please make sure that you're accounting for your time, whether it's 15 minutes, half hour, an hour, two hours, three hours, you know, and then when you pull that money out, you're just pulling it out as part of those wages that you know you have to set aside in your cost of goods. I've got more videos on this. I'm going to continue to do more videos in the future, but hopefully my main goal right here is for you just to be thinking about your pricing a little bit differently than the way that you've been looking at it and for you to be able to learn to plug in those numbers so you fully understand what it is that you're doing. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and end right here. Please make sure you subscribe and like and make sure that you hang out because we're going to keep talking about your numbers and we're going to keep talking about pricing and profits and all that good stuff so that way you can make more money. And with that, I am out of here and I will talk to you next time. Bye for now.